The Radeon HD 6870 was a solid mid-range card from AMD back in 2010. How does it handle in 2021? Today we have a relic of gaming past, the Radeon HD 6870. It had a launch price of 239 US dollars, although I picked this card up for a mere 12 bucks. Although they seem to be going for around 40 to 50 dollars right now on eBay with the current GPU shortage going on. This card represented AMD's attempt to continue competing with Nvidia's 400 series of GTX graphics cards. It had 1000 120 stream processors and one gigabyte of DDR5, a core clock of 900 megahertz and a memory clock of 1.05 gigahertz. This card was built on TSMC's manufacturing process at the time of 40 nanometers and codenamed the Terra Scale 2 architecture. What we have here today is the two gigabyte iFinity invariant made by Vision Tech. It features the same core clock and memory clock as the reference design, yet what makes it unique is its six mini display ports using AMD's Infinity Technology, Infinity Eye Technology, to allow for up to six displays which can be combined into a singular large display. So let's just jump right into thermals. This thing gets pretty goddamn warm, as GPUs from this era usually seem to do. At idle, it sits at a cool 40 Celsius, which is not too bad at all yet. We move into a gaming load, it does go up to 72 Celsius, and then up to 82 Celsius under synthetic load. Yet, it is still cooler than that GTX 780 Lightning from MSI that we looked at a couple weeks ago. Moving on to the star of the show, the gaming benchmarks. Today, I targeted 1080p low to medium settings, although sometimes I decided to go for high. First up, we have Counter-Strike Global Offensive running at 1080p low settings. We had a max FPS of 268 and an average of 161, which is a pretty good result in our first benchmark here. Yet with minimums of 25 FPS in smokes, it does get kind of annoying, but CSGO's smokes are pretty intensive and poorly optimized. This is still a fairly playable experience. Continuing with our beginning trend of esports titles, we have Valorant running at 1080p low settings again, which sees similar success with playability as CSGO does. We got a max FPS of 328 and an average of 215, yet this time we see much better lows as we only dip down to 100 FPS, which is very nice and very playable for all those competitive FPS needs of FPS. Next up, we have Building Hotels to Kill People Simulator, also known as Fortnite. We are using the Performance API settings, so young boys don't yell at me in the comments that everyone plays on the Performance API settings. We get a max of 228 FPS with an average of 111, with lows down to around 48. This is, yet again, another very playable esports title experience. This is more than enough FPS to build death hotels to your heart's desire. Moving on in our benchmarks, we have the best car soccer game available on Steam, Rocket League. This time around, we have the game on high settings, 1080p, where we maintained a solid 60 FPS average with highs of 70 FPS with small dips down into the 52 fps range which is nice and solid and a very consistent experience it's very smooth and this is very playable next up we have as always our racing games first up here we have project cars 2 running at high settings where we saw an average of 35 fps with minimums of 25 fps and a high of 63. i found this to be a very playable fps although the FPS averages may tell a different story for some people. I don't mind when racing games are at 40 FPS, it's a very console-like experience here, and I care much more about the look of the game, which is why the settings are at high here. Next up, in our racing games, we have Dirt Rally 2.0. This time, I had to go down to medium settings to stay under the 2 gigabytes of VRAM limit. We got another console-like 30 FPS with lows down to 25 FPS and a high of 44. This was a very playable FPS. I don't need 200 FPS yet again to play a racing game, I just want it to look nice. 
you could bump these settings down and potentially get higher FPS if you wanted to play on low. That is up to you, so your mileage may vary. Last but not least, we have one of the hottest games right now, the game that sold 4 million copies in two weeks, Valheim. This game is still in early access and isn't amazingly well optimized. This time we are running 1080p low settings. We got a very poor average of 25 FPS with 32 FPS max and a minimum of 15 FPS. This was not super playable. I really wouldn't recommend this experience and even when I dropped it down to 720p, it wasn't really better. Now I was quite surprised by how well this card held up. It was very solid for the price all around. Besides a couple dips in FPS and the thermals being a little hotter than normal, but these cards are always hot from this era. But you can keep yourself cool with water. Water in a BHA Tech Store water bottle. BHATechStore.com Now, these weren't the most demanding titles, they were more esports oriented, but for what I paid for this card, you cannot get better performance in these games. I prob yet, I probably wouldn't recommend buying this card for anything except maybe work or school or light gaming or someone trying to buy a GPU with lunch money and install it in an older PC. That might be, like, I guess a use case, a reason to buy this card. Yet, with the 2 gigabytes of VRAM, it really limits you to playing older games or more esports oriented titles. I really wouldn't recommend buying anything older than AMD's 7000, 7900 series of GPUs. I really hope you guys enjoyed this look back where we take a look at older GPUs from days gone by. I'm BHA Tech Hunter and have a good night. Today's video was brought to you by us. BHATechStore.com is now live. Make sure to check it out in the description down below. The latest tech reviews and now the latest merch designs. BHATechStore.com